Good evening and thank you for joining our final nights at the museum program tonight. And we have a wonderful crowd. We're so happy to see that. One of the first announcements I'd like to make before we get started is this little button on the side of your phone. Please turn it off. We don't want that going on when we're having our program. Tonight, Dr. Doug Anderson and Greta Grand will share a photographic history of Orange City. Greta graduated from Northwestern University, Evanston, Illinois, with a degree in history. She obtained her master's degree in library science from Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. Greta is the library director at Northwestern College here in Orange City and has served in that position for seven years, having worked in Northwestern's library now for 14 years. Now you may remember, <laughs> to shut off your phone. <laughs> you may remember Greta's previous presentation. It was Widow on the Witness Stand about Alice Blood's murder trial. Now, Greta, are we going to have a lot of blood and murder tonight? None. 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 Shoot. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> we'll have to soldier on, I guess. Greta and Doug Anderson co authored the book Orange City, along with Tim Schlack and Sarah Klastenbach. Now, that may not be the right way to pronounce it, but that's the best I could do. So, uh, Greta lives in Hull with her husband and four daughters. And Doug is a part-time archivist at Northwestern College and retired faculty member of Northwestern College, and he retired from teaching history in 2014, which was a good year, I think, <laughs> for Doug. <laughs> Orange City is the one book he has been involved in authoring at present, and this book came out at Tulip Time in 2014. It is still available through Barnes & Noble and Amazon Online, and also available at the Northwestern College Bookstore. Doug is researching and writing a new history of Northwestern College, and uh, he has also published three online articles related to aspects of the history of Sioux County. He's written some articles on Henry Hospers, Hendrina Hospers, and the early years of Northwestern College. Now another uh, announcement I'd like to make is Isaac back there doing the camera work. Uh, we want to thank Isaac. He has provided our camera work for the whole season and uh, we really want to give him a special thank, thank you. He was faithfully recorded each of our sessions and you can go to our Facebook page and look back at our previous uh, Nights at the Museum programs. And, and some of you, if you were not able to attend, I think you'll really enjoy it if you can go back and take a look at it now for the first time or just review it again. So we're very thankful for Isaac for all he's done for us. <laughs> One other announcement I have to make is after the presentation tonight, We'll observe our bylaws and we'll have our annual business meeting. So you're welcome to attend if you'd like to. If you don't have time for it or you don't care to, that's fine too. But uh, we do want to announce that we will have our annual business meeting following our presentation tonight. <clears throat> now what we need to do is journey through Orange City's pho photographic past through the history to remember what's gone Notice what's changed, and treasure what's remained the same. Please welcome Greta and Doug. Am I on? I'm on. Okay, good. And I'm trying to stay out of the way for all of you folks here so you can sort of see things better. If you need to, motion me and I'll... <laughs> Try and get out of the way. <clears throat> Two quotations that we'd like to begin with to set a larger context. Quotation number one, and okay, we're, we, yes. Try it the other way. Hmm. 
Oh man, this is what happens when you set up too early, things go to sleep. There we there go. There we go, okay. Quotation number one, which comes from Yi Fu Tuan, a cultural geographer. Quote, space and place are basic components of the lived world. We take them for granted. When we think about them, however, they may assume unexpected meanings and raise questions we have not thought to ask. The second quote takes a little setting up, so wait for the quote. <laughs> landscape, the word landscape, comes from the Dutch word landscap. Landscape paintings, Dutch did a lot of them, um, has a basic meaning of natural scenery. In terms of space and place, like Yi Fu Tuan talked about, a built landscape, like a townscape, such as Orange City, for example, can be thought of, here's the quote, as a composition of man-made or man-modified spaces to serve as infrastructure or background for our collective existence. From John Brinkerhoff Jackson, who is a landscape studies specialist. Yes, there is such a thing. <laughs> Next slide. <clears throat> when what Greta and I will present tonight is about Orange City as a townscape over time as seen in photographs and maps. It's broadly comprehensive in terms of chronology from 1870 to recent times. It is not, however, exhaustive, sorry. Uh, the focus is on the built environment, not on human individuals or groups. And there is much in the built environment we have neither the time nor the sources to deal with. Once past the 1920s for tonight, we're going to become a lot spottier, but we will kind of get up to recent times. We are drawing in a major way on our book, which has already been mentioned, Orange City. Um, tonight, we are able to include some things which we weren't able to include in the book, if you don't have the book, what are you waiting for? <laughs> uh, we, we are drawing in a major way on the book. Uh, we will use some of the book's structure to organize at least large chunks of material. And many of the pictures we show you are in the book, but not all of them. Most of the photos come from Northwestern College archives and from the museum archives, but there are also other sources, and we try to label everything as to where we've got it. So some people who've helped us with pictures, I'm sure, are here tonight. And that reminds me, um, neither Greta nor I are Orange Cityans native. At least Greta is Dutch. I'm not. We, we, <laughs> we look to you to help us out. We hope there's some interaction as we show things, because we may not always have all the facts or the names right, et cetera. So we hope there will be some group participation as we go along. OK, first era, 1870 to 1901. Dutch American colonists, I know most of you know this, Dutch American colonists from Pella, Iowa, under the leadership of Henry Hospers, founded Orange City and settled in Sioux County and the region beginning in 1870. The 1870s as a decade presented economic and environmental challenges. For example, nationwide depression, grasshoppers, and drought. <coughs> However, between 1870 and when Henry Hospers died in 1901, so the first 31 years, Orange City grew to over 1,400 people. It became the county seat. It gained railroad connections, and citizens organized and built churches, schools, notably Northwestern Classical Academy, as it was at the time, <laughs> businesses, professional offices, and homes. While the streets weren't yet paved by, 19, by 1901, they were graded, and there were some sidewalks, some street lamps, and even electricity. 
So a few years ago on eBay, we discovered a letter from a man from Philadelphia who visited Orange City in 1876. And I believe this is probably one of the first recollections we have of somebody seeing Orange City who didn't you know, stay and live in Orange City. And so this man was here, he was engaged to a woman in Philadelphia and he was traveling out here. I believe he was like a land investor, buying up land and then, and then reselling it. And so I wanted to share with you some of the things he said about Orange City when he visited. He said, we reached Orange City this morning about 10. We got into East Orange last night at about 12.20 and had to remain in a hotel until this morning where we came over to Orange City, three and a half miles in a stage. Darling, never saw a country as this, but we are really wifey. And they're engaged, but he always calls her wifey. We are really wifey, out on the plains in a little town of 20 or more houses. A town but five years of age, but a very nice town for a western town of its age. The settlers are Hollanders who have named their town after the Prince of Orange. There's a large Dutch windmill about half a mile in front of Mary's home. He has a very nice little house. We want to try our hand at chickens tomorrow. This is in September, so they said it is still a splendid season for gunning, but it is now late for chickens. There is not a tree except one, a planted one within 20 miles of here. And a fence is as novel here as in the Rhine Valley. We can see for many, many miles out upon the unsettled prairie. How I wish my darling could see it. It would be new to her and I know she would enjoy it. The air is so good and we all feel so well now, my darling wifey. Now I will say this guy is in love because the next part is gonna be a little mushy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I should love to take her on my knee now and kiss and love her. Wouldn't wifey give me lots of kisses, dear darling? I do love you so dearly. And wifey loves me just as much, doesn't she? Now I wish she could see the plains here covered with a pretty purple aster and other plants of various kinds. It is very wild in one way. And now the real kicker, it's like the guy invented love. He says, darling, you are dearer to me than ever woman was before to man. <laughs> so, and this is written on the stationery of Pierce and Lewis, some early um, settlers in Orange City. We have another letter from him that was also penned while he was here, where he talks a little bit more about the hunting they did of, of the ducks and the, and the chickens. So it's kind of interesting to see this perspective from an outsider at the time. It, and might I add, is kind, of, kind of, at least in parts, a word picture of the natural landscape. We're going to be focusing on the townscape, but the townscape is in the midst of and being shaped by this natural landscape. So we have a word picture of sort about the flowers and the, and the, and the prairies and the fact that the town, at least from these visitors, this is a western town. It's a frontier town. Whoops, we're going our way. Sorry, there we go. And the next one, which, yes. Okay. This is the oldest plat that we have been able to find. It comes from 1875. The original street names, this was as large as Orange City was mapped out to be at the time. Uh, and there was at that time only one town square, the public square, which is now a windmill. But notice how what is now Albany is Prairie. What is now Central is Washington. William, Pella, Sioux, Vanderbeek, the West End. There's first, second, third, but there's no north or south. There's just first, second, third, and there's South End, and there's West End. Creative. <laughs> and the next That is the cemetery, our cemetery? Yes. I believe so, yeah. Public Square. So first we're going to show you some pictures that one way or another are usually around or where they are in relation to the Public Square at the time. So first to the north. 
This is an early photo, the Orange City Store, 1873, Slayster and C. Hospers. Now, Henry Hospers was the colony leader, but he, had, he was one of 10 siblings. His two youngest brothers, Willem, or William, and C. Cornelius, came fairly early to town and became merchants, whereas Henry Hospers focused on land and banks and other kinds of things. <laughs> the old courthouse, 1874. Now, some of you know this, but just kind of keeping the dates a little straight in, in your minds. Initially, Sioux County's county seat was in Calliope. Calliope, which is now part of Haywarden, but originally there was no Haywarden, just Calliope. Calliope was the county seat, but there was the Calliope Raid, the Angry Dutch in early, like I think it was January 1872, made their way over, broke into the old courthouse, took the safe back to Orange City, but they were forced to give it back. But at the end of 1872, there was the election in which Orange City won the vote to be the county seat. So no courthouse yet in Orange City in 1872, but it becomes the county seat. 1873, there's still not a courthouse officially. County offices are sort of scattered here and there in a few of the stores that were in town. So 1874, finally, there's the courthouse. And then it's expanded a little. I don't have the date for that off the top of my head, but you can tell the expansion with the difference in the siding, so add it on here. Okay, back to our plat map. And Henry Hospers. The first home of Henry Hospers, the second home, built about two blocks south and across Prairie where there's the plaque now saying where Henry Hosper's home was, but the house that's there is not this. Henry Hosper's family home, don't have an exact date. This is probably the 1880s. And Henry Hosper's was many things. He was a land dealer. Um, he was a banker. He passed the bar, so he hung out a shingle for uh, being a lawyer, uh, a notary public. He was mayor. He was elected to the state legislature in the Iowa House. He was in the Iowa Senate. He was county supervisor, chair of the, count of the board of county supervisors for many years. But here, this is Henry Hosper's gentleman farmer, kind of a mansion. We don't know who the people are, although this looks on the porch kind of like a little Dutch woman's cap of some sort, but can't really quite tell. And if these are any of these are family members, don't know. But then, slightly later, this must be probably early 20th century because you see the telephone pole, electric wires there. Same house, but from a slightly different angle. It doesn't look as big, but if you compare it to the other one, it's still the same building. According to Nelson Neuenhuis, this house burned around 1930, circa 1930, which is why there's a different house there now. Back to the plat, map again, and to the north, to uh, that would be Third Street, what is now Third Street North in Washington, Third Street in Central, but the south side of it. Greta? Yeah, this is the orange house right back here, like a hotel. And then this is a hardware store. We spend a lot of time zooming into these things in Photoshop, trying to make out exactly, exactly what these things are. But the orange house, um, I believe Sarah talked about a little bit in her presentation a, a few months ago, weeks ago, I'm not sure. But they, it, did, it was destroyed in 1886 by a fire. And the fire was quite destructive. And the newspaper reports on the fire. And it says the largest and most destructive fire ever known in the history of our city had its origin in or near the office of the Orange House. 
at half past three last Sunday morning. Mr. and Mrs. A.T. Howard, who slept in the room east of the office, were awakened by the smoke and on investigating the cause found the fire beyond control. Now this is where I think it gets interesting. They say the Orange House was an old, rotten, rickety building, a landmark of the early history of the city, and yet for its own sake, the loss of the miserable structure was mourned by none. <laughs> now, that was in 1886. However, just a few years earlier, in the mid-1870s, the newspaper had a little bit different story about the Orange House. They said this, the Orange House by Dingaman is a model of cleanliness and neatness, and the quality of the victuals served is not surpassed by any hotel in the Northwest, including Sioux City's crack concerns. So it was once like the height of sophistication here in Orange City, and just a decade later was an old, rotting, rickety frontier dump. So, interesting. <laughs> And then you can, if you, I did kind of try to zoom in on the signs, you can make out the letters of the orange house up there for you. Back to our plat map. And looking, going south of the public square on what was then Washington is now central. Probably around 1890 or the late 1880s, looking up the dirt street. You can make out boardwalks, particularly on this side, and you can barely make out the hints of some under the trees on the other side of the road. The trees in the distance is the park. East side, east side of Windmill Park, what is now Windmill Park. And Henry Hosper's Bank, more on that in a moment. Uh, and the Hosper Brothers, the corner building, the corner brick building, the Hosper Brothers grocery merchant place block. So streets still dirt, uh, boardwalks, trees of the town square, wood, otherwise, so some brick buildings, some stone buildings, but also frame buildings as well. And here's the Hosper's Bank, 1884, initially erected, and Greta has an interesting little find on the next slide, but yeah. you want to say some things? Well, I mean, I believe, that, yeah, this is so interesting. There's this guy hanging out the window right here, I don't know if you can see him up there. Someone in the doorway, you know, we have the, the carriages and the horses, clearly some sort of place to park your carriage when you come into town over here. And then Hospers, you know, was a leading businessman and he had some stationery made that he used this uh, photo to, to create the etching. So this is some of the stationery we have in our archives. And you can see that building there and you can see a lot of similarities. You can see the carriage and horses. He did manage to make things look slightly better. No one hanging out the window. <laughs> A little bit more activity in front. The trees are a little more bloomed, but um, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. And I believe this is his writing. The next, the other page does have his signature on it that I don't have here. So kind of fun to see. Okay, now we get to something a little complicated. Maybe some of you can correct me if I've got this wrong, but I'm relying on an article by someone who some of you know. Earl William Kennedy writing about the Bettons. So the Betton Century Home, A.J. Betton Jr., 1843 to 1925, born in the Netherlands, came to Orange City from Pella in 1871. Merchant, uh, elected Sioux County Auditor, elected Sioux County Treasurer on the Board of Supervisors, Orange City Mayor, a uh, councilman, a uh, school board member, editor of the Dutch language weekly De Volksvereen for about six years. Uh, De Volksvereen was something Henry Hospers established. Uh, 1898, he married Cornelia van der Linden, so presumably that is the two of them standing in front here. What the little suitcase here is doing, I don't know. They're just <laughs> returning, trying to leave. <laughs> I don't know. But now kind of moving from that to the next one, 
A.J. Benton Jr., uh, his father was the senior, the Reverend A.J. Benton, 1813 to 1900, born in the Netherlands, a protege of Domini Hendrik Skolte in Pella, but who began to disagree, as many people in Pella did, with Skolte, and helped launch uh, A.J. Benton, the Reverend Senior, helped launch the first Reformed Church in Pella, but, but, um, his, he didn't entirely disagree with Skolta, especially on eschatological premillennial things, theologically, <laughs> and he had a problem marriage, a second marriage and a divorce. And the consistory visited him more than once about family problems. Eventually, um, to which leads to these other Bettons. The second marriage, Mrs. A.J. Benton, um, who, Yante, uh, her nickname, Adrian, Adriane Yanta von Pelt, she had, a brother in, she had a brother in town, a Van Pelt, uh, Benton, and two sons, Dick and Herman Benton. Adriana Yantia von Pelt, uh, widow of Cornelius Kuiper uh, back in Pella. So she was a widow, and uh, the Reverend A.J. Benton was a widower. They married not long after, after their being widowed. and. Um, she was 16 years younger than he. Uh, they married in 18, if I'm reading my notes here, 1851, they divorced in 1875. That's about when the Reverend Benton came to be with his son. But then she showed up in town a few years later. And quoting from the inimitable Bill Kennedy, she helped set up a saloon come billiard hall come restaurant, which turned into the Hotel Benton, which ended up being run mostly by her son Dick or Dirk, and then Brother Herman, I guess, was county sheriff for a while. So the Hotel Benton and the Benton Century Home, the Benton Clan. <coughs> Okay, um, now, architectural styles. By the time we get to the 1890s, more substantial buildings are being in place, no longer wood frame. We, we already have the Hospers Bank and the Hospers Brothers Store, but now the public school gets an 1892 Richardsonian Romanesque. That, this was a popular style in the 1890s name for an architect, I think he was Boston-based, you can check me on that, Henry Hobson Richardson, who took the kind of Romanesque, big Roman arch and built kind of this heavy, making kind of a public statement, we're here, we're stable. You're impressed, right? Mm -hmm. Architecturally impressive, often with a turret, not often with a turret, but often. Um, architect George Pass Sr. Next slide. Similar, two years later, the first Northwestern Academy building, Richardsonian Romanesque, guess what? Same architect, George Pass Sr. So two Richardsonian Romanesque buildings in town to show that Orange City is growing and becoming substantial. He also was the architect behind the second uh, American Reformed Church, I believe. He had quite a business. He was out of Mankato, but he had quite a business here in Orange City. And uh, this building was actually built, it's a little bit later, but it cost about $3,000 less than the public high school because the country was in a little bit of a depression. So they got a little bit more for their money here on the, the Academy Hall. It secured labor a little cheaper. All right, the next, back to the plant map. And going down Washington Street, a little one block south of the public square on the west side, some shops which, if you study them 
and zoom in a little bit more. Here's a bicycle, person looking out the door, brooms standing here. Peanuts for sale, flower bags, I think, cans, and we're not certain. It are looks probably some kind of fruit, I don't know if they're oranges perhaps. Erkies and van der uh, but up here, Brink uh, and Erkies. Brink and Erkies. Stables and fancy groceries. Fancy. Yeah, they were always called fancy groceries then. All the ads and stuff always referred to as fancy groceries. <laughs> And they had a, a bakery as well. They were pretty well known for their rust buns at Perkins. <laughs> you can also kind of see the hitching posts here in front of the buildings, which are sort of interesting. And then I don't know, drugs, books, cigars? I don't know what you think of that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the globe thing in front of the door. This right here? Oh, this? Yeah. I don't know. Does someone know? I don't know if it's it? bubble gum or what? <laughs> <laughs> I am not sure. I'm not sure what this is either. I don't know if this was something with the photograph itself. I don't know. Yeah. And then, is there, is there another There one? is. Okay, Go yes. Go down a little bit. Yes. The, the, for the drugs, books and cigars, the pestle, the, you know, the, the druggist pestle hanging over the door. And then clothing. Rhines Burger clothing. clothing, shoes, boots. And furnishings, yeah. So this was the DeCrice building. I don't know if you can see that at the top up there. Okay, now 3rd Street North, the north side. The photographs we had, this is so grainy that zooming in more doesn't show much, but I think you can recognize at least some of those buildings are still there. Still there. You can see the post there as well. Streets are still dirt. Paving came in 1917, which actually takes us to our next clump of pictures, 1902 through 1929. With a new Sioux County courthouse dedicated in 1904, Orange City flourished in a stable, reformed sort of manner, that is, decently and in <laughs> From a little over 1,400 people in 1900 to over 1,700 people in 1930, the town growth was measured. The Dutch language began to wane, especially with the English-only push during World War I, but as evidenced with Teddy Roosevelt gaining election as president, being Dutch and American was not a problem. As automobiles became more common, the streets were not only renamed but paved, the new courthouse itself helped set a more prosperous architectural tone to public and private buildings, including on the campus of Northwestern. Telephones and electric appliances became commonplace by the 1920s. Now this, we've been showing you the kind of the 1875 plat of Oyen City. This is the first published plat in the Sioux County Atlas that was published in 1908. And as the next thing suggests, the original plat is in yellow colors, but then addition, you know, additions, the towns especially growing south, so green is sort of the south addition, leading down to where the academy is. The streets, though, are still with their original names, Washington, William, Pella, Sue. There was a Garfield, those of you who are familiar with uh, uh, Destiny of the Republic book about the assassination of President Garfield. Well, we, we did at one time have a Garfield in town. And do you recognize the architecture? <laughs> Richardsonian Romanesque, <laughs> the courthouse. And this, this is taken from the original water tower. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was painted orange, um, <laughs> although I'm not sure about that. Uh, but the original water tower, you know, this is before drones. So how do you get an aerial picture? 
from the water tower then, you'll, you will see the water tower a little bit later, but climbing up the water tower to take this picture, and... And then, we always like to look in the backgrounds of our pictures, you know, as we're doing this, to understand what's happening back there. This, I believe, belonged to scale camps, and this is listed on the map as an office. And then, of course, over here, we have the Slago Lumber Yard, where we're currently standing. This is, this is where this we is, are. Probably standing here in the yeah, lumber. Where the right. lumber is, right here. This is the annex. I don't know if any of you drove by often when they were redoing it, but you could see that that lettering up there on the top. So that's kind of fun to see. That is. Okay. Our next picture here is this panorama. It's also in the entryway, and we have a, a copy of it here. So this one is always kind of a, a mind trick for me a little bit. How this worked is they stood on a corner and looked north and looked south. So this is the same street, right? But this is looking north to Hull, and this is looking south to, to Zwaymer Hall there. Um, I know, it's a little trippy. So we're going to zoom in on these. Notice the water tower. Yes, that's the water tower that took the picture of the courthouse, which doesn't seem possible there, but that's how it, how it worked. So zooming in on this, you know, we're looking north up Washington here, up toward toward Windmill Park. So you can see still pretty frontier town buildings there with the, with the wood fronts. And as we kind of go across the street. Restaurant. That, yeah. We're not sure what that is right there. That has yeah. like more of the flat roof. The, so far, visually, there's been nothing particularly in town to suggest that the town is Dutch. Mm -hmm. The architecture is just the vernacular American architecture at the time, or the fancy Richard Sonia Romanesque architecture mm -hmm. of the time. Maybe this is a little, is this a little Dutch touch to it? Yeah. A touch of Dutch, yeah. <laughs> All right, this is kind of the center point of the photo. I think Doug knows more about this. The, this is the water tower, and this is, scruffy as it is, this is the town hall at the time. And there, there's a little broken window up at the top. The town hall and the opera house, uh, doesn't look like they've weeded in a while. Uh, uh, what they were, you know, why, why was it scruffy looking at them? Uh, And now you're looking south down towards Zwemer Hall. What, well, it wasn't called Zwemer yeah, yet. Right the yeah. Academy Hall. And then the corner there, the final shot there. The, I like the back posing. I know. <laughs> it does feel like quite a few people are posed and one's in the way background or maybe more, more natural. I don't know. People are getting in and out of the carriages. So. Now, so, so some of these next pictures are really really fascinating to us. From the water tower, with all the leaves down, take your pictures in winter if you're doing drone or other aerial pictures so you can actually see things. We do have these in both summer and winter, but the summers, you can't see anything. It's just trees, right? So it is nice to see the, the winter ones. So here's this little flat, flat roof part, the mansard roof. Hotel Benton, uh, the, the uh, Hosper's Brothers Block, Hosper's Bank, First Reform Steeple. What is the park? And now we're looking south towards Zwaymer. You can see Zwaymer up there at the top. This house might look familiar. I believe this is still standing there. And this is kind of fun to see too, all these like outbuildings that they had. Outhouses? Pretty sure we had outhouse here, you know, some of these outbuildings. And then this was Van the Lumber Yard okay. that you can see there. And probably by this time, the railroad, East West Railroad, probably a grain elevator over there by the railroad. At least I don't know what else would be so tall near the railroad. Then, then we're still in the water tower looking northwest. So there's the Orange City Public School up there at the top. Here's the California bungalow, bungalow built around 1910. And this over here across from the courthouse 
That was skull pants. And then, from the Zwemer Tower, from the Academy Hall Tower, not in winter, so you can't, but you can make out the water tower, the original water tower, and the courthouse, and First Christian Reformed, and the Christian School, but not a whole lot else other than the dirt street of Washington. Let me see. Hawkeye Hotel, which apparently provided free bus service to the Alton Railway Station, according to the ads. Little cafe. Yeah. There's a cafe there. I think it had a nice restaurant inside, from what I was And uh, reports. now look, it's paving by 1919. There's paving. Mm -hmm. And pretty nice street lights, too. Before you probably saw those ones hanging in the middle of the street. I'm going to all right. Looking north on Washington in 1920, zooming in a little bit, Vans Cafe, the bank, which is now the computer store, the 1916 bank, paving. And that little sign there that says keep to right, that, that's not a political direction, that's a <laughs> traffic direction. Sandborn maps. Some of you may have heard of Sandborn maps. I, I encountered them a while ago in some of my research. In, in 1867, Sanborn Map Company was founded in New York, New York. They specialized in going to cities and towns. So Orange City didn't have any Sanborn maps before 1909. It wasn't big enough. They made maps for insurance purposes. If somebody's going to insure your building, how likely is it to burn down? What's it made of? How big is it? Is it a private dwelling? Is it a public building? So maps for insurance purposes, but if you can find a Sanborn map, you can find out where buildings were, what they were made of, what were they a store at the time, and if you find a different Sanborn map, was it something else at some other time? So Sanborn maps, and so... Yeah, they're kind of fun to see. So when we look at that, you know, shot in Washington, this was that Vans restaurant here. We had a number of millinery shops in town. Before it was the bank, the post office was here before it moved to the corner of the, the Hospers building there. So it's really fun to see. Up there at the top, you can see there's a brick oven and there was a bakery mm -hmm. in that spot across the street. One, you know, two stories, one story, office, office. Yeah, these are all available like through the, the state library. So they, they are online if you look for them through the state library. They're really fun to look at, I think, and see what's there. So now back to the hot, what was originally the Hospers Bank, but by this time is no longer that. So we saw this picture before, and this is when Hospers moved into it around 1884. And um, it says it was the imposing building for Orange City being the first brick structure to appear among the, the banking, about the, among the buildings. The Volkstreet was located in the basement. And Shortly thereafter, uh, another section was added on, or kind of attached to it, I guess, to give the same style in the two-story. That was Gessel Camp's drugstore below. I cannot find the quote. I'm so mad at myself because it's just poor research on this librarian's part. But somewhere I read that they added this because this building, they were so worried the wind might actually knock it down. It just wasn't super sturdy. Then looking north on Washington in 1928. So the Windmill Park is on the left side of the picture, what is now Windmill Park. The post office is in the Hospers building. And we just love to zoom in. You know, we see Jerry's Inn over there where you can eat, and there's a sign there by that light pole that says groceries. This here, you know, I just can't help myself, so I have to try to dig in and figure out all these things say. That says Slide Kelly Slide, which turns out was a very popular movie in 1928, which we believe was probably shown right around there, 
there, right on the corner. So there's the, the Hospers building right down the street of the movie theater. Yes, there were movies in Orange City <laughs> earlier than you may have thought. <laughs> And the park, what is now Windmill Park. But here, before paving, with a bandstand, seems to be circular and more or less in the middle of the park. And this seems to be taken from the corner of 3rd North and what was then Washington. It is now Central. Here, there's paving. And there's a different bandstand. It seems to be moved over to the side of the park. And then it gets added on to, but still seems to be more or less in the same place on the side of the park. I think this is probably one of our latest photos that we're showing today. And this just shows kind of the, the progression of, uh, well, Central Avenue now, but what was Washington back then. And this is from 1950, and I think it's so fun to see these 50s landscapes, how all the signs kind of stick out from the buildings, you know, there's some neon there. This was the city garage. It almost feels like those little people guys, you know, you have the city garage. Over here, you can see a Wells Blue Bunny, bunny sign, bakery, all sorts of shops there. As we zoom in, you know, when we're trying to date these you know we have to find all these details to see what's happening over on the very side there you can see a sign that says meet uncle sally what that was was it was the play orange city high school was doing in the spring of 1950 which is how we date it so it's so fun to, to find these but we do have a question for all of you there is something at the end of the street that it looks like a home do people remember a home or some sort of structure being at the north end of Central Avenue. In 1950. Anybody knows? We would love to know more about what that is right there. We're looking north right now, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the first reform steeple there. So. Anything comes to you, let us know if any memories come. The second column on the left there looks like it was newer than 1940. The what? The second it, card on, on the left. Oh, it's 1950. I don't know if that looks right or not. That's... So... This is backing up a few years. This is a, a Tulip Festival photo, but we're really not looking so much at the Tulip Festival stuff here. We're looking at some of the other things. We love seeing those gentlemen up there who climbed up to the top to watch the parade. There's a few more on top of this building over here, people watching it. You know the shops, this is some sort of, this is Doc's Cafe. You can see the Coke sign, also a beer sign, wooden wall there. And then this was the old Hawkeye Hotel, which had been repurposed into a Gamble Hardware shop right there. And Council Oak Foods right here. Then we're actually going to go into this building a little bit. This is the building that just was torn down. But the coffee moon, which is no more and becoming part of the Holland House. So this half here at this time was Andrew and Jewelers. And then you can see the barber pole right here. So this was the Hollinga Barber Shop that we're gonna- Before the little white store, the Hollinga Barber Shop. We're gonna go into that. So this is our only interior, but um, courtesy of Mayor Breaking, this picture of Gert, who I guess was known as Shorty, is that right? And Lambert, and the mirror, so you can sort of see where apparently there's a dividing wall. And you can see the little aquarium with the fish. And I guess the fish went home over the weekends to go to the pond near home and then were brought back. Um, but th this was built in 1935. And then the peanut dispenser for a penny. I don't, I'm not sure how many peanuts you got for a penny. But. Yeah. 
It's a great photo, and when we were looking into this, I found another little fun snippet that I wanted to share with you about this. In 1936, the Sioux County Capitol reported that Shorty Hollinga had installed a cooling system in his barber shop. And the, the papers are real clear. It's one of those articles in the fold where I can't get all the words on one side. But they're trying to explain a little bit of how the air conditioning unit worked, how it put air through the coils. But the best part of the article was that Shorty says that on the hottest days, he can keep the temperature down to about 80 degrees. <laughs> right? Sounds so pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> So there's the later Hollinga Barber Shop. And now we, we are getting towards the end, the, the, the various, uh, various uh, things we have left to show you, but this is kind of symbolic to realize how much in Orange City there was moving around of buildings, within buildings, replacing buildings, moving the little white store around. We're not even sure what this particular building is, it's being moved. So even within Orange City, the being on the move and trying to figure out how things in this townscape changed over time. Now. All right, we're hoping this works. So this is Isaac again. You know, Isaac has done so much stuff for the museum. He also, earlier this year, I asked if he could recreate these photos that we had, you know, these aerial shots, and he did that for us. He did not climb up a water tower that no longer exists, but he used a drone this time. <laughs> so it's sort of fun. This is the one looking north towards Waymer, taken from the water tower. Okay. So, so. Oh. I'm sorry, looking south towards Waymer from the water tower. Thank you for me. And then if we yeah. slide over here, it's so fun to see how it, how it has changed over time. So that's kind of a fun fun thing but the one thing that stays you can see this house right here is, is the same so that's super fun this one here i like to show as well so the courthouse and orange city public school and then sliding it over unveiling today the new water tower, the new water tower. Couple, this house is still the same i believe and this is the same yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, this is the one taken from Zwamer Tower, looking north. I'm confirming any my directions mixed up. Looking north. You know, the streets are so rough and unpaved, and now it just looks so fancy, right? With our beautiful library and this boulevard, and even notice how much has changed even since this was taken in the spring. You know, this building is now finished. Yeah, and you can see the the main towers of the, the city there of the landscape. This is another one you may enjoy. This is looking kind of northwest. You have know, the Hotel Benton and Central Avenue here. And then we can swipe over to see. Many of those are the same, you know, but different fronts and obviously different purposes. And the park has changed quite a bit too. Can you can you slide back a little? Uh, yes. Whole picture, just a sec. Of course. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, really. There's really not much in the park, right? I, I'm assuming the band show is kind of behind this, where we can't can't see it. Yeah. So these are sort of fun. Maybe we'll figure out a way to put them online so you guys can, can mess around with that at home since it's sort of fun. So that's all we had. We'd love to hear your stories or if you have any questions about what we shared, we, we'd love to answer them. change the street names? Good question. I can't remember. 
Yeah. Maybe 59. Yeah. 59. Okay. Oh. <coughs> 59. So, so fairly late. Far away, similar kind of landscape. Yeah. Yeah. So the high school that was built a couple of years before Northwestern Academy, how long was that in use? Up until the 1940s? I, I think, think it burned in the yeah. 1940s. Yeah, it had. There was a major fire. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, during World War II or right after World War II, something like that, I think. Yeah. I want to say 48 for some reason. Yeah, I think I think there's a yeah, picture in the book. Forty eight. Forty eight. Yeah. And so we, we lost the school that was west from downtown, is that right? And where did the school go then? Same spot, right? Same spot. So if we look at let's see, I don't know if I can control all this so well. If we go to the Yeah. So this is where it was, like a block west of Two the blocks. courthouse. Mm -hmm. and that's where it was rebuilt, I believe. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you slide it over, you can see it. Slide it over, yes. Right, Isaac. <laughs> so it's Orange City Elementary now. But And so, and by the way, for the little Northwestern College history, Northwestern College was the first high school academy in town, but then the new school, finally the first public high school, so you begin to get competition between the two schools. some of this history to life, especially with the pictures and your stories about what's going on with Orange City. Also, if you've enjoyed tonight's Nights at the Museum and you've enjoyed the other presentations, we really appreciate you continuing to support us both financially and with your, your efforts um, as volunteers. So uh, that's another thing that we want to remind you of. We are going to have a fundraising uh, opportunity coming this winter and we will put some uh, notations in your utility bills, and you'll have an opportunity to give again. So, <laughs> hope you take advantage of that. Another thing we'd like uh, for you to 
do is, I know the winter gets kind of long and this is our last presentation, but we do have some ideas that uh, there may be some more things you might want to look forward to uh, in our website and in our Facebook pages. So keep, keep that in mind. Also, there's some, some of the people that have made presentations during this uh, season also are writers. And we appreciate the writings that they've done. We do have a listings of several of the people who have done writings for the Orange City and the Sioux County area. So if you'd be interested in some of those, we do have some listings that you can look at and we make those available to you as well. So on that, thank you for coming. Um, I think Arlo will begin our business meeting in just a few minutes, so thank you again.